Good morning, everyone. A blessed feast day to you. The feast day of St. Nicholas the Wonder Worker, Bishop of Mira in Nicaea. I wanted to take a few minutes just to highlight the life of the saint and some of the miracles uh, that happened uh, after his uh, falling asleep, after his repose, and then over many, many centuries, because St. Nicholas was an early church father, all these miracles that took place and uh, truly inspired and protected and saved uh, many people, many towns, many cities. Um, St. Nicholas, uh, from the 4th century, uh, has truly touched the lives of uh, millions of people. You can't really uh, count the, uh, the effect that St. Nicholas has had on the church as a hierarch, as a philanthropist, as uh, a saint who certainly intercedes um, for the faithful. Just to read a couple um, highlights of his life from the, uh, the prologue of Akrit, a beautiful book on all the saints uh, of uh, Eastern Orthodoxy. Uh, there's a section in the Feast Day of St. Nicholas concerning um, the, the intercessions that the Virgin Mary had to protect and guide St. Nicholas, not just throughout his life, especially later in life as a hierarch. So just a couple minutes to read this reflection, and then a reflection on a reflection. In the icons of St. Nicholas, the Lord Savior is usually depicted on one side with a gospel in his hand, and the Virgin Mary, the Theotokos, depicted on the other side of the saint, so one on either side of St. Nicholas. And the Most Holy Virgin Mary is depicted on the side of St. Nicholas with an Episcopal Omophorion, which is the vestment that the bishop wears over his uh, neck and head and hangs down. Uh, this has two, this has a twofold historical significance. First, it signifies the calling of St. Nicholas as a hierarch. And the second signifies the exoneration from condemnation that followed his confrontation with the heretic Arius, when St. Nicholas defended um, the dogma of the Orthodox Church against the heretic Arius, who indicated that the divinity of Jesus Christ was more, or the divinity of God the Father even, was more important than Jesus Christ. In essence, Arius diminished the divinity of Jesus Christ, and this is a heresy. We believe that Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man after the First Ecumenical Council of Nicaea in 325, and St. Nicholas was one of the main defenders of the true dogma and the true faith. And as a result, he slapped Arius. We all know this story. And he was in a lot of trouble for a, 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 to be against the canons and for a hierarch and for a clergyman to strike anyone, let alone another clergyman, questionable, um, was, some, was a very large scandal. St. Methodius, the Patriarch of Constantinople, writes, One night, St. Nicholas saw our Savior in glory standing by him <coughs> and extending to him the gospel adorned with gold and pearls. On his other side, he saw the Theotokos, who was placing the Episcopal pallium on his shoulders, or the Omophorium. Shortly after this vision, John, Archbishop of Myra, died, and St. Nicholas was appointed Archbishop of that city. That was the first incident. The second incident occurred at the time of the First Ecumenical Council in Nicaea. Unable to stop Arius through reason from imposing the irrational blasphemy against the Son of God and his Most Holy Mother, St. Nicholas struck Arius on the face with his hand. The Holy Fathers at the Council, protesting such an action, banned Nicholas from the Council and deprived him from all emblems and Episcopal rank. That same night, several of the Holy Fathers saw an identical vision how the Lord Savior and the Most Holy Theotokos were standing around St. Nicholas, on one side the Lord Savior with the Gospel, and on the other side the Most Holy Theotokos with the Omophorion, presenting the saint with the Episcopal emblems that had been removed from him. Seeing this, the fathers were awestruck and quickly returned Nicholas to, which, to that which he had been removed. They began to respect him as a great and chosen one of God, and they interpreted his action against Arius, not as an act of unreasonable anger, but rather an expression of great zeal for God's church. So, a very quick uh, highlight 
and the the miracle that surrounded uh, Saint Nicholas's uh, guidance and his protection, and certainly we know uh, guidance from the Holy Spirit uh, to uh, certainly uh, protect and give Saint Nicholas the uh, Pharos, if you will, the courage to act in defense of the faith. This is just one incident, and usually the most popular concerning Saint Nicholas. And um, I want to try to read uh, from the uh, prologue of Akrit or some of uh, the other uh, feast days or saints of the church because there is a true wealth that we can get from the lives of the saints, especially the martyrs. Uh, we just celebrated that Yel Varvara, tremendous martyr of the faith, uh, the beginning of November, Saint Nectarios, the archangels. Um, moving through November, uh, Saint Andrew was the last day of November, November 30th. Saint Catherine the Great, November 25th. All these saints. And today we celebrate St. Nicholas uh, truly touch our life. The miracles of St. Nicholas and all the saints are uh, immeasurable. They're uncountable. Uh, there are numerous recent accounts of uh, St. Nicholas uh, curing people of their illness, uh, granting sight to those who are blind, uh, interceding for families who are in need, as we know um, the famous story of St. Nicholas helping the father with three daughters, throwing um, bags of gold, uh, one story says through their window, the concept of down the chimney or through some sort of uh, smoke escape hole, whatever have you, thus creating the image of uh, modern day Santa Claus. But St. Nicholas as a philanthropist, as one who intercedes, um, patron saint of those who sail, as, as he himself was... Uh, sailing to the Holy Land. A storm came and through his prayers, even as a young man and then later in life as a uh, hierarch, uh, was able to save uh, those who were sailing to calm the storm, similar to Christ as he calmed the storm. But, and then in our church locally, we have a, um, a saint, the icon of St. Nicholas, uh, miraculously speaking, was the only item, period, to survive uh, the fire that which occurred in one of our side rooms in our church. There was nothing left in this room. There was really nothing recognizable, nothing but ash and soot, but a full icon of St. Nicholas. The edges were burned, but the image of St. Nicholas remained. And St. Nicholas has truly blessed me. He has blessed our community. He continues to intercede and pray for all of us. So today, as we celebrate his feast day as we celebrate his life may we have his blessings may we have his prayers may we continually surround ourselves uh, with the lives of the saints the grace of god and the constant coming of the holy spirit may we all be blessed as we approach the nativity of our lord and savior jesus christ have a beautiful day god bless you all for those who celebrate saint nicholas and uh, have a blessed and beautiful day